can you tell us about the time that your dick stopped working? Oh my God. <laughs> Are we doing that one? All right. Okay. I'm going to title the podcast that as well. Yeah. I, th- I thought I, I, when you said that to me, I thought, ah, oh, that sounds like a bit of a contrived clickbait short. I but anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, I can if you want. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm not shy. I, I, yeah. It's quite a statement. When you said it in the, in the studio, like before you left and you were like, yeah, one time my, my dicks actually stopped working. Like, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't even understand how I, how we got onto that. We must've been talking about diet or something for me to, yeah, I think it, to mention it. Yeah. Um, you're quite an open book though, to be fair. Like when, yeah. I don't have anything to Camera's out rolling. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, that, that did happen actually one time. I think we were talking about, it, it, I think we were talking about diet or something, but yeah, that there's a, it, it's, a lot of people know the story anyway, because I probably, mentioned it when we did the whole why is he not fat episode yeah. um but yeah years ago i did um just this really long diet or fat loss phase whatever you want to call it uh, where i got like really really lean there's only like one picture of, i'm not really a gym selfie kind of guy so there's only really one picture of me in this condition yeah but you can see in the picture like how lean i am and, and um one thing i think people don't realize about being people see, this, this is the thing like you see people on instagram and whatnot really lean and in shape and whatnot. And if you are really, really lean and you're natural, right? So you're not on any special curriculars, then it's really, it's not really unhealthy. You might look healthy on the, on the surface. So you might look like the, uh, uh, what people deem to be healthy, but you're really not. And, um, yeah, at the most extreme, I think it was like about 8% body fat, maybe even lower. I can't really remember, but, um, yeah, the, the worst part of that, um, was, it, it fucks with your endocrine system, right? And like hormone production and all, all that kind of stuff. And I was like, yeah, my, I couldn't get an erection. <laughs> Basically, that's the long and short of this story. Um, because yeah, it was it, it affects your production testosterone. So like I would wake up and, you know, when you're, uh, this is probably back when, before my channel, so this would have been seven years ago. Right. And I, so I would have been, what, uh, my late 20s. Um, and at that age, you're still in your kind of physical peak, aren't you, pretty much? So you would normally wait. I don't want to get too graphic, especially for the female listeners. But when you're a man, there's no. Fa- I, I'm looking at demographics about this. There's no, no female yeah. listeners. No. Okay, that's a shame. But um, you, you usually wake up in the morning and you've you've got a bit of a pole on, you know, like you you, <laughs> you got a bit of morning glory, and that's like a natural thing, right? And I would I remember like I, I had to go to the doctor for it actually in the end. Um, but yeah, I remember wake up in, and I would never like I just have a completely flaccid. This is a bit graphic, but a totally <laughs> flaccid member every morning. I thought this is a bit weird, and obviously it would come to um, about chicka wow wow. Yeah, were but, you were with this? Were yeah, you? this I was with Lindsay at this time. All yeah. right, yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, fortunately because she was quite understanding about it all. But um, yeah, and I I remember just thinking this is really odd, but knowing enough about enough about like the human body, I knew what, why it was. Right, I thought all right, this is because. I'd, I'd probably need to start eating some food and uh, eat a little bit more dietary fat and just get fatter, basically. Um, but I did go to the doctor just in case it was anything dodgy. And I remember him like saying to me, is there a new partner? I'm like, no. Are there any issues there? Like, And he really quizzed me about like, do you still find each other attractive? I'm like, I fucking hope so. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, in, in it, it was just a question of, you know. I, did, I, you, did you panic though? Like that must've been like, so. Nah, I didn't really. Did you try and get a direction? What the fuck do you mean I try and get a right? <laughs> like, so you wake up, like, obviously that was like an involuntary action of waking up. But like, did you think this isn't working? Maybe I'll, uh, yeah, maybe because, I'll get on the site. Yeah. That, well, that's sponsored by, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we could get a sponsor for what those weird, te- nah, testosterone boosters don't work if you, if you, if you wondered. I was thinking about the blue sites. That's all. Oh, blue Zeus and stuff. Those no, pills. No sites. Like oh, right. Pra- uh, prawn hub and. Yeah. Well, I know. I mean, like I, I'd had some difficulty, I think with, 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 with Lynn's, uh, okay. oh, right, uh, this, okay, this right. is like th- probably three years into our relationship. So, so we're not smashing like Catholic bunny rabbits, you know, like, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? We're, 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 at this point we, we kind of cooled off a little bit, but yeah, I still had like issues. And I just thought it was kind of like a, uh, one of those things. But I remember the, the thought that went through my mind was like, I knew I, I had no energy anyway at this point because I was so, so lean and eating so little for such a long period of time. And I would train all the time. So, um, I, I remember thinking like it's, it's it has to be because of the condition I'm in really. More than and you, else. what were the reason for you getting in that condition? Like, what's the? Just wanted to. You wanted to see how lean you could get. Yeah, like I've I've, I've talked about this before, but like I've, I've always been like goal oriented, and the, especially this time in my life, the gym was like that was my my happy place. I spent like two hours, sometimes more, a day training, six days a week and stuff, and it was like iron. 
what was it wasn't like for a, a, I think people think it's vanity when you, especially when it comes to like losing body fat and stuff and it wasn't really it was just like how far can you go you know and I remember at that point I was like I look in the mirror and like objectively think this looks gnarly as fuck you know because especially as well when when you diet and again you, you're not on any kind of uh, anabolic steroids or anything like that you uh, you don't look like you lift without your shirt on you just like a skinny dude but like if you take your shirt off and you're like oh man you can see like veins you can, if you can see veins in your legs and your butt it's not it's, it's not a condition to be in it's horrible it's right? too much too low of a body fat but I'm, I'm glad i did it just because of the the willpower and determination it takes to do it but that was kind of the, the point if you ask lynn's because she uh, as well she hated me in that condition she, yeah, yeah. she really didn't like it and she was like, I think you've done enough now. And that's how the whole food challenge thing started, actually, because she was like, oh, I've seen this thing. And I still loved food at that time. But um, yeah, I kept, it slowly kind of came out of that. And luckily, you know, you started my, my winky again. started working again after <laughs> not too long. But uh, yeah, I remember that. It's a weird byproduct, isn't it? Like you said, if you're not on uh, anabolics, because I know... I, I know <laughs> what, you... what a weird way to start a podcast. <laughs> I don't know. I just like one of those stories. I'm like, I, I, that's a, it's so funny that like, because you know, it works again. If it's... Like if you'd have said, oh, it still didn't work 10 years later, I'd have gone, we probably can't we won't talk about that publicly. <laughs> <laughs> I still got my pump at home for, right. for those moments. But um, yeah, like uh, I know a few people that have done natural bodybuilding competitions. And obviously when you get down, like females, they stop having periods and things like that. Like it's so bad for your body. Um, oh, yeah. But like, you know, the, the media might portray that to be like lean six pack, you know, veins coming out your abs. That's portrayed as like a perfect image and it's like so bad for you. Yeah, I mean, even when, you know, you see like fitness models, so people are on like the cover of Men's Health and stuff like that, who are maybe more like 12% body fat. That's still not, you're not going to feel good at that. I don't care if you're not on any kind of, uh, you know, chemicals, you're not going to, you're not going to feel good. You're going to feel horrible. I remember I, I would walk to work in the morning and my heels would, would actually physically hurt because of so little cushion there. Cause you erode in every single part oh of your body. My God. Not, it's not just fat that's going right. But you, because you're training and stuff, you're lifting weights, the, your body is thinking, all right, I've got to preserve that, but everything else can kind of go. So you, f- you feel awful. I, th- I would never get that lean ever again, ever, ever, ever for, yeah, for yeah. any kind of money. I could, but I just wouldn't because it feels horrible. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't look good. Most people don't want to see somebody like, it looks gnarly as hell when you see somebody who's like really, really lean. They just send you. You're lucky that um, Mrs. Beard was understanding, really. You know, mm. supporting. Not, it's a selfish sport, isn't it? It's bodybuilding. It's not a sport, it's a pageant, but um, right. <laughs> at the risk of offending bodybuilders. But yeah, no, it is. And she she really was understanding because it's not only that, not only the fact that she didn't get to enjoy the, the pleasures of carnal knowledge of me, you know, she, it was the fact that you, 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 um, you, you're you miserable as well because you, yeah. you know, you're always, you're always hungry. So you're always, um, you know, you, you're not in a good mood and you, there's stuff that you can't do, but um and especially if it's like, I almost kind of get it with bodybuilders because like they're usually motivated for a particular event, like a contest or whatever. With me, it was, wasn't that. I was just like, right, let's see how lean I can get before, you know, I, not before I die, but before I just cannot sustain it anymore. And that turned out to be really, really lean. That's crazy. Were you, um, were you like restricting your water as well? Just don't, no. no, you were, you were sticking to like being well hydrated. Because obviously yeah. like when, when uh, fighters cut weight, um, they obviously cut, all the body fat as well as then the water which becomes super dangerous that's why they get on like, yeah a lot of them do that too much don't they and then they yeah. get, end up getting chinned on like in the cage or well, the that, boxes or they say that's why or potentially why darren till um lost to like uh, jorge masvidal and a couple of his fights i think he were fighting at welterweight yeah i think he were fighting at welterweight and he went up a, up a weight class but when he was at welterweight he was cutting so much weight he's such a big dude that he, t- he took a clip off Jorge Masvidal and got penciled, like absolutely sparked out. Yeah, because even stuff like, people forget like how much sodium has an effect on performance as well. Like there are studies done on that. Like if, like high, I, I can tell you like the difference between like a normal, like my diet is really low in salt usually, right yeah. day to day. But then one of the benefits, not only is energy when you overeat, but like the, the sheer amount of salt in you, in you, you know, because of the, that benefits performance. So when fighters are cutting tons of water, what with that's going to go salt and glycogen and everything else. I think it's a crazy system, the, way, the whole weight, weighing system for fights and stuff. There's got to be a better way to do it than them. You know, powerlifters do it as well, where they'll like diet down and then they'll eat, eat like six kilos of carbohydrates over the course of two days before the actual contest happens. All right. Just because they then fill back out. So you're not actually competing at that weight. So be, there's got to be a, a better way to do yeah, it. Yeah. I, I mean, like with the fighters, like if, here's a, 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 what is it for you? Exclusive. We've got a, an ex UFC fighter coming on the show in a couple of weeks. So we can actually ask him about that. But there are organizations that um, do hydration tests now uh, on fight week. So, to, so that people fight at a more natural weight class, just because mm. it's dangerous. But again, 
oh man, this is a debate we could go, we will do it with when uh, Danny comes on, but you know, the dangers of mixed martial arts versus boxing and that's something we can probably get into um, at a later date. Uh, what last question was it like um how how good of a day was it when you finally got your piece back working like about, about the weight of the world <laughs> of all the things that could go wrong in your life the weight of the world must have been lifted off your shoulders i don't know that was i wasn't that bothered about like <laughs> the actual you know it sounds terrible to say it my dick stopped working but um it, it wasn't that that really bothered me it was the fact that i knew that I was doing some underlying damage to my actual body, you know. But yeah, it was. When it, I just felt better generally when it kind of when when thing. And yeah, Mrs. Beard was much happier. I'll put it that way. Hope she's not watching this now. She'll be like, "Oh my god, he's divulging all these details of our private life." I'm sure she probably doesn't. Watch she has a rapacious sexual appetite. Let me tell you. What does that mean? Can we get that on the screen? What does she, 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 she's an insatiable woman. She loves. Uh, she, she, oh, right. She'd be doing it like every day if it was up to her. I'm, 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 like, I'm too old for that now. She's lucky if it's like once fortnightly. <laughs> Oh, poor Mrs. Beard. Clip that, George. Get that out, out there. For those that are listening and watching, if it's starting... Sorry, if they're watching and it looks kind of weird, we've, we've updated the studio, so we're actually live switching whilst doing the show so that we can get out faster and start producing more content. So we've, we have made an upgrade. and We've got George in the corner Answer taking George. over old Mike's job. Rest in peace. All right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so if it kind of looks a bit fucked up, it's because George is trying to get to grips with the uh, the machine. Um, but whilst we're on the topic of uh, of your penis, um, you did come in today with a grin on your face telling us about how you enjoyed watching Naked Attraction. So tell us a little bit of, of your tales of, is this what Beard Meets Food gets up to on a night? Well, I did actually say, if you if you recall, I, I, I normally do, I don't watch much TV at all, right? And reality TV is my, I, I can't stand it, right? But I do have some, I've seen Naked Attraction before, right? If people don't know, it's that show where somebody goes, it's a bit like Blind Date, right? Where you go on a show and there's like five potential mates in uh, these tubes and the, the tube, whatever you, the tube is <laughs> gradually reveals parts of their body the last being the face and they're naked right so you're supposed to i'm not sure what that that, that tells people about the state of humanity currently but that's what passes for tv and I, it's kind of like it's like um car crash tv right you watch it just because it's there's something about it which is compelling Can't take your eyes off it yeah and um yeah i watched an episode last night that, it, that wasn't you said on the topic of your pain it didn't give me a bone or anything i'm just saying i, I happened to watch the show i know some weird looking i mean the sexual organs don't look great at the best of times i don't think but you think um, you'd do it you think you'd go on the show if if all falls apart with you and mrs beard no no if if, if, if it, things fall apart with me and mrs beard i'm gonna go join like a monastery i'm gonna go live like celibacy in, in celibacy for the rest of my life in peace but, um, <laughs> I doubt it's just not, that's not a way to meet someone. I can't imagine any successful relationships I've ever developed from that show. I'd be all right getting naked. I don't have any problem with that. You know what I think would be really funny if, um, if what's that lady called that actually presents it? Is it Anna, Anna Richardson or something like that? I could be wrong. She's got like brown hair. And yeah, we'll, we'll assume it's her. But imagine if it were David Attenborough. Imagine his voice. <laughs> and here we have a uh, lady in... I can't, I don't want to go into too much detail, but you get where I'm going with that. I'll get cancelled. Yeah, that would be good. And there is a, uh, an under average size penis uh, and he's he's had his foreskin taken off uh, and, the, and the, the maid seems to be pr- approving of that. <laughs> you, you, did not, you didn't okay this podcast with me beforehand. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, it's, it's a weird show, uh, but yeah, I did I did watch it last night and it was... I don't want to say it was entertaining, but it was it was insightful. You articulated a fair point before we started rolling about um, going backwards of what would be natural to finding someone attractive. So can you can you articulate that point? Yeah, I think it's an interesting show because you watch it right, and I think people. I don't know. You you told me people don't get paid to go on it, right? I I, w- I was on the assumption that if you're going to be a cont- maybe the the guy that or the guy or the girl that wants to find somebody, maybe they don't get paid. But I would have thought the people in the tubes get paid. If the, somebody could let us know in the comments if well, you know. I, I'm pr- like, so the only reason I, I'm 99% sure that you don't get paid because the casting agent for Naked Attraction moved then onto that Channel 4's, Channel 5's packed lunch, Steph's packed lunch, the one that you got invited on, yeah. I got invited on. It's the, it, got, it got a record for zero viewers in a live zero show. Zero viewers in the middle of the day. Uh, so that dude yeah. got in contact with me about getting on the thing uh Oh, he was the casting guy for he, so, but he'd Naked come, Attraction. He'd come from Naked Attraction to that channel five packed loan show, whatever it was called. I, so, yeah, I don't know why I'm saying that this, they, they get paid because I, I know what TV production companies are like. They're probably not paying anyone. But like, I, I don't understand why anyone would go on that show. And what what is interesting about it is because usually if you see naked torsos anywhere, 
typically you're going to see torsos or the bodies that conform to what people think are good bodies, right? So if you look at, uh, I don't know, like a Calvin Klein advertisement or like a, a, a I don't know, a cologne advertisement. It's going to be some fitness model who's ripped. And you, so when you see people on TV and they have average bodies, you know, there's nothing wrong with those bodies, but you look at them and it's almost kind of like a, like a freak show thing. And you'd be looking at it thinking, oh, those balls are a bit dangly. Oh, <laughs> you know, that's, that, that, is, that isn't quite symmetrical. So I, find, I don't understand the motivation for people to actually go on the show. That, that's, that's my thing. Well, I've just found a, an article on OK Magazine while you were talking there saying that you don't get paid to go on the show if you're on standby. So they must have more than, if it's like 10 booths, they must have like 15 in case, you know, somebody pulls out at last minute, pulls out. <laughs> <laughs> ah, throw them up, we'll knock them down. Uh, but if you get on the show and you're in the booth, you get 75 quid. 75 quid? <laughs> Good Lord. Um, yeah, it's just a weird show. I don't know how we got onto that, but... Um...